It's a bit grim for the morning's chubbing. In fact, it's been raining all night long and there's some very strong winds. At least for the moment it's all stopped, but looking at those clouds up there in the west, I feel that uh, we're going to get some more later on. Oh, this is an awkward gate to open and shut. God, yeah, man, must have been a lot of rain. It's very squelchy here. River doesn't look too bad. It's uh, probably low, if anything. In fact, it's been very, very low just lately. Most peculiar. Last time I fished it, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of leaves. We really haven't had a, a tremendous flood yet, although we've had lots of rain. Oh, Nim. <laughs> You're not getting any of my bread today. Well, I don't know. The river looks a bit painfully low from here. It's, I can see the bottom too. Well, I thought after all that rain, the river was going to be a lot higher and more coloured than this. It's painfully clear. And it's so low, I think it's probably got something to do with the pumping station that the AWA are installing further downstream. That's what all that racket's about. Not going to be easy here today. Actually, at this spot last week, I bumped into old Len Baker, who was looking at some swans in this area, and it was a very interesting conversation we had. I think you're going to enjoy seeing it. Morning, Len. Hello, young John. <laughs> young? Wish I was. What are you doing out this morning? Looking for swans? I was just checking that little fellow over, John. His father was crippled here last week with tackle. Now that little chap doesn't look well at all. Yeah. It's got a funny sort of um, slant to its neck. I'm afraid he's got lead. I didn't realise it affects them that young, young in age, but now, now you, you look at it at this angle, it's definitely got something wrong with its neck. He's just it? a very sick little swan. Yeah. But young, it affects them from the ovaries. You know, if the mother's got lead. Yeah. The lead actually travels can be through the ovaries can really? into the yolk of the egg, so the baby's born with a burden. He could die of lead without one single piece of fisherman's weight, you know? Yeah. Simply because his threshold of lead is way, way high. His yeah. kidney's already damaged, you know? Yeah. Just come and go around and have a look at it. Come and have a look at the little fella, John. Mm. He hasn't even grown like he's... You know, he should be much, much bigger than that by this time of the year. Yeah, so I can see what you mean yeah. about that... That uh, signet from he's here. He's a sick little chap, John. Yeah, squelchy here, watch it. Oh. Yeah, he's very so His neck, neck looks that much squatter, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not, not upright, is it? Yeah. It's folded down that, that much more. Well, from his tummy, John, from halfway along his body, right up until a third of the way up his neck, that's still vegetation in there that he can't digest. He can't it? go through? No, because his little gizzard stopped solid now. Does, does it actually go, the food actually go through the gizzard? Oh, yeah, the it gizzard, it all itself. it is, John, is a ball mill. It's a grinding machine, mm. mate. There's nothing more complex than that. It's a muscle with a cavity inside, mm. and in that cavity is grit. Yeah. And the grit grinds the vegetation and food stuff up, then passes that through to the intestines. It's your mouth, really, mate. That's all it is. Yeah. And you can't put a mouth in a swan's beak because it's by nose down, so it's in his tummy. That really is what it is. Now, the media, Len, has always suggested that you dislike anglers. I know that not to be true, but what do you say? Um, shall I take my foot off your instep first? Uh, yeah, right now, if you don't mind. <laughs> Just like anglers, well, a child, isn't it? Pathetic. I don't like stuffed marrow either. I'm not too keen on Coronation Street, you know. It just doesn't enter any... But the media love confrontation, right? Mm. It sells things. Len Baker slams the Duke of Edinburgh. Len Baker hates John Wilson and his fishermen. What a load of old cobblers. Well, there's not room for this, mate. There's not room for this dislike or hate. I'm not interested. No, I don't I... like fishing. I don't do it as a hobby, I think you're around a twist. But you probably wouldn't like to rescue swans every day, you know. We're all a bit funny, mate. That's right. I mean, I, I found out you got very much in common with anglers several years ago, if you remember when we met down downstream, and I had a bit mm. of balmy one of, one, one of your swan employees on the mm. other side of the river, and you invited me across. And ironically enough, you had on the other side of the river a tub of the first lead free weights, That's didn't you? That's right, yeah. And it was ironic that I yeah, couldn't get them time as time, an angling yeah. writer, and you had them, but as the... That's right. In fact, I've got yeah. some of the, 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 the latest ones with me now. I want your 
See what you think of them. This is a they're doing some good jobs. They now, are. They're super. They're this is the new metric movies. one. Have a look at that one. That's made out. They of really are clever people. Um, these people. And the, in here is a mixture of the Sandvik safe weights and the Thamesley Super Shot. Have you used this one, yeah. John? This new one? Yeah, I've used that. I use a I mixture of all of them. I know you use all those. Them. Yeah, I, I like to use a mixture of all of them because it's some incredible, are harder. It's incredible, isn't it? Some oh, I couldn't others. have been done all that time ago. Well, John, that's true. You know. I know. At least it's a start, mate. I mean, yeah. you know, let's, let's be a little Good, bit positive. I'm... It's a start. Yeah. People are interested now. Of course they right. are. In, in fact, with bombs, if you have a look at this, this Good is the grief. latest what in are bombs. They? Well, they're made from brass and you've got a little screw separate swivel top like that. Oh, that's brilliant. And each that's of them... That's lovely. Can I see it? Yep. Each of them screws into the same swivel top. What so a you clever can, little thing, John. You can instantly change from one size to another. It's better than how it used to be, isn't what it? What a clever little... I mean, all those people telling me anglers can't use joined up writing yet and they can make something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, mate. I'm, de I'm delighted, seriously. And what can be done, then, to, uh, from the shooting point of view, what can be done? Our anglers are trying to put their house in order by all these lead-free, non-toxic alternatives. What oh, can be done in the shooting situation? At this very moment that we're going out, and uh, I don't know when this will go on the television screens or whatever, but while we're talking, the British Association for Shooting and Conservation are working with the NCC mm. on the death of Hooper Swan through lead poisoning. Uh, I just wish they wouldn't couple those two things, shooting and conservation. You know, it niggles mm -hmm. me a bit, but that's a word. That's why I'm not a conservationist. I say mm -hmm. swans and birds. But they're working on it, but it's going to take an awful long time. Yeah. Can you imagine if we could weigh the amount of lead used, for example, on a clay pigeon shoot of a Saturday afternoon, John? I think anglers lose a little less than that over a season, mate. Well, it's nice to know that you see it in an all-round situation, and I'm sure a lot of anglers will be that much happier for knowing that, because it's never come through until right. now. You can't compromise with the truth, mate. Shall we go and have a look down the river? Can have on. a cup of tea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I'll tell you what, Len, there's something I've always been meaning to ask you, and that is, can a swan really break a man's arm? Yeah, usually when they're driving a full transit or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be very careful here today with this clarity. I think it's a case of hit and run. I've got plenty of bread flake and some worms, and I'll, I think what I'll do is just move from swim to swim, probably taking one or two fish in each or, or none. I'm not going to give it very long in each, that's for certain. This wind's springing up a bit as well. Yes! <laughs> We're in. Oh! oh. That took right down the other end of the swim then. Ooh. I thought that's where they might be lying. Oh, it's not off pulling in this float. The clutch a bit too loose there, really. Oh no, it's trying to get under that far bank there. Ah, oh, God, just turned it in time. Feels like a good fish. The clutch a little bit slack there. I've got to be a bit careful playing a strong fish in fast water on the clash in case it makes a, a sudden lunge downstream. This is where sometimes they make a, a swimmer's roll and uh, a last minute dive. Come on. Oh, that's only a, only a little fish. I thought that was much bigger than that, the way that was going. Oh, that noise over there, that's driving me absolutely crackers. Oh, it's a nice chunky little fish. Lovely one. Typical of a Wensum winter chub. Oh, it's got a most peculiar thing on its tail there. It's like an appendage to its tail. Haven't seen that before. Most peculiar. Beautiful colours, these Wensum chub. Super fish. Look at that, like a new penny. Absolutely beautiful. Mixtures of silvers and bronze and pinks and greys. Lovely. I like bread from a really new loaf and I push the hook into it like that, put my thumb over the point whilst I squeeze it on. And when that swells in the water, the hook point easily goes in. That's better. There we are, I've got the bait right down at the end of the swim, where I had the last bite. Goodness me, that's an awful racket coming from that pumping station over there. I don't know what they're doing. It's 
not exactly a quiet day by the waterside at the moment. I don't know, I think I had a little tiny twitch then. Yes! There we are. Oh. Do you know, I've had a couple of those I haven't even bothered to hit. Thinking that they might be dace and not chub, but they are biting very, very delicately today. This one's a good fish, it's keeping very low down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Come on. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Right. Come on. Oh, no, he got it. <laughs> got stuck on that bed of leaves here, right in front of me. There's an almost great big bed of leaves where the river's been in flood and they've all collected on the inside of the bend. That's a nice fish. About the usual sort of stamp of these went some chub, about two and a half to three. There we are. Lovely looking fresh fish, that. Well, this swim's gone dead now that I've had a couple. And so I'm going to walk a long way downstream to one of my favourite bends. And anyway, that noise is driving me absolutely crackers. I can't stick that all day long. You so I'm going to walk away from it. And that's the nice thing about winter chubbing, you can wander. In fact, I often catch some very big fish by doing just that. Well, here we are, we're much further downstream now at a nice double S bend. We've got well away from that horrible racket, but uh, the trouble is here is we've got a lot more wind. That would be the easiest bend to fish, but I always fancy this very shallow one where the wind's ripping through so i'm going to give this a go be very quiet here because the water's so very clear i'll creep down behind this thick bed of reed grass right this is a better spot i can put my rod rest and store down here i think i'll start by putting in a little mash bread quite fast here as it comes whisking around this corner. There's quite a few leaves coming down as well. A little bit into the middle of the river. This is old bread, really well soaked and then mashed up and it sends off lots of little particles downstream. I'm sure I had a little touch on that cast. I should have hit that, but at the time I thought it was blanket weed. No, let's whack it in anyway. I think I'm going to try lots of different spots around the swim until I pick them up. I haven't really had any indication where they're lying at the moment. Sometimes they're lying right underneath my own bank, very close in, particularly when the river's in flood. And sometimes they're right over on the far bank, just off that point now. I think I'm going to give it a go over there now. That's better. I've gone a little bit too far. We'll leave that anyway. I'm sticking with the flake. I haven't bothered to try worms yet. If I go on to trotting, I'll probably give maggots a go. But, so I haven't indi had any indication at all of any numbers of bites. With the water nicely rippled like this, I shouldn't think it would worry them moving up onto this bend. Hello. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a clanger. <laughs> Oh, that was that long cast. I put that right at the end of the swim there. Oh, this wind. I have to be careful with this because there's so much pressure on the, the line from the wind that it's going to knock it off the hook here and I'm down to a three pound hook link to try and get a few more bites. Oh, it's trying to get underneath my own bank there. Come on. Oh, that is a good fish. Cool. Come on, Wilson, careful. Easy does it. That's where I always worry about them. Getting off for that last minute. Oh, that's a super fish. 
Well over four pounds. Oh, 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 oh. look at the size of that. Oh, what a whopping great chub. That's got to be four and a half, getting on for five pounds. Look at that one. Oh, that's fabulous. That's the biggest chub I've caught in this room for a long time. I think I'll have to unhook him with the forceps. Right. Never ever put your finger down a chub's throat because down there they've got the most incredible set of powerful frangial teeth. I've got a set here. Look. That's what's at the back of their throat in there and when they munch their food if your finger's down there, you can guess what's going to happen. Right. Incredible powerful throat teeth. Let's put him back straight away. Well, I just put him on the scales and he went four pounds, 11 ounces. Lovely fish. Let's put him back. Where you go. I think what I'm going to do is move downstream a bit and uh, see if I can find some trees on the other bank to trot to. Two or three hundred yards downstream, there's a, a very nice swim where I usually get a few fish, so I think I'm going to move down there. Here I am, I'm in a, a nice trotting swim. It's so blustery though, it's not easy to see this float in this face. And I've started off with a waggler here, there's really nothing else I can do. It's very, very gusting as well. But the chubber there, they haven't climbed out on the bank, so we'll see what we can do. And to top it all, the sun's actually poking its head through every now and again, right into the float, so... Um, it's not going to be easy seeing these bites, if we get any. Right, let's straighten up. Here we go. I did have ten minutes quiver tipping first without... Uh, without the touch. See what the float brings. Wind's difficult. It really is. Yes! This feels like a good one. Oh, it's really putting some bend in the rod. It's kiting upstream now. This is where I worry about the little hook coming out when it comes opposite me. It invariably does. I don't know why. It's probably the angle the hook went in at. That's a good... Oh, that is a good fish. Yes. The first thing you see about a chub is its enormous great mouth and those big old rubber lips coming to you. Come on. There we are. Come on. There he is. Got him. Good. Oh, it's much nicer catching them trotting, even if this wind is proving a bit, a bit difficult. I always think I'd sooner have a chub trotting and four on the on the ledger. It's a nice plump fish. That three, three and a half. Lovely plump when some chub. Where's the hook? <laughs> oh dear me. Hardly in at all. I nearly lost that one. Right, as this water's so clear here, I think what I'll do, I'll put these in the net. I don't really like putting them back in the water when uh, when the river's so clear, so I think I'll put the keep net up here, out of the way. I have to be very careful because this this uh, bank's so squelchy here. Well, right. Let's dampen the net first of all. That's a nice fish, that one. Nice and chunky. They fight so hard on light tackle. That's what I like about them. Right, let's put him down there a second. Stay still. No, that's no good. Let's have that out again. The wind's blowing the net back at me here. That's better. Right, in you go. Lay the net flat and... Uh, he'll be all right there, in case we catch some others.
going down nicely now. The wind's gone a bit quiet on me there. This is the sort of run through where you get a bite. Yes, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's trying to get under those trees. No, we're okay. Oh, <laughs> it's not ready yet, though. Come on, baby. Come on. Dump the Johnny. No, he's still not having it. Strong fish, this one. It's not enormous. It's not as big as that four pounder, but it's uh, it's fighting really well. Come on. When they got their mouth open, they're ready. Oh. That one went well. It's a nice thing about using light tackle when you can in the winter for chub. They fight so well. <laughs> Let's put him in the net. Put two yellow maggots on this time. I like these yellow maggots. They're dyed with a non-carcinogenous dye, and uh, I think they're excellent for clear water. It's a mute point, really, whether they really make any difference to bites. But uh, I think if you think it does, then that's the half the problem. Gives you that little edge of confidence. Whacking coo through quite fast, actually. I wonder if they've opened one of the sluice gates further upstream and down. Yes! Great. Let's hope the hook doesn't pull there. This water's so fast and that's still going downstream now. God, they don't half pull these winter chub. They really do. Oh, that's be it's a beautiful fight, this. I just can't hurry it. It's, well, the wind, when it blows, comes to me and puts so much torque on that rod tip, it's liable to rip the hook out, so I've got to go just that little bit more steady than what I normally would, really. It's coming upstream towards me now. That's strange, that, when they're really going well there, whenever I can just get the float going through on the right line, bang, the float goes. But when it's dragging because the wind's pulling the float over, they just don't want to know. Come on, this is a good fish as well. Feels very heavy. You to be careful with this, Wilson. That is a very good fish. Looks like a four plusser. Come on, my baby. Yeah, look at that now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, on trotting gear, that's fabulous. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is super. Lovely thick fish. Lovely these winds and chub. Well, that's it. I think I've had enough of this. The wind's getting worse. It's just started to rain. The light's going. And I think it's time to call it a day. And it hasn't been too bad at all, really, considering the conditions. I didn't expect to catch so many fish from this swim. I was really going to have a bit of a wandering day. Let's have a look in the keep. Let's see how many we've got. Ooh. I like having a last look at them all at the end of the day. Oh, certainly didn't expect to catch this many out of this last swim. There we are. Six of the best. That's a good one. Possibly three and a half, four. All the rest, probably two and a half to three. I did, didn't expect to get six out of that swim this afternoon in this weather. Right, let's put them back. Oh, that's the good one. Oh, they're in super condition, these chaps. Oh, that one shut up. <laughs> oh, this water's freezing. No, oh, that's a good one as well. Perhaps I was underestimating some of these. They're not bad fish. Perhaps get a little bit of flippant at times on the Wenton because it's such good chubbing. There we are. Away you go. Last one. I think I've kept the smallest one for last. There you go. Uh, did you enjoy that? So did I. <laughs> It's 
a lovely drive here through the trees. They must have been hundreds of years old, these oaks and a few ashes and beech. Here we are. It's a lovely sight when you see the lake at the end of this lane. Super place. But it's a bit overcast at the moment. There's a lot of flies around the windscreen. I hope we're not going to get a storm later. Well, it's a bit overcast, but, um, mate, looks lovely. Looks absolutely super. Oh. Well, let's get the gear out. These lovely ferns, it really is nice just to be here. Let alone the fishing. The fishing's often just a bonus. It's super to be in such a wonderful environment. Oh, here we are. This is a swim I fancy. This is where I saw some tench fizzing the other morning. Before I put the bait out, I'm going to have a little look through the bins. Oh, there's one out there now. There's another. I don't think I'm going to need too much bait here this morning. Seems to be a natural feeding area. So I'm not going to upset it too much by putting out too much bait. I'll just put a few balls out. Here's my ground bait. It's got all sorts of lovely things in it. It's got sweet corn, tares, hemp, maggots, carsers. It's got salmon fry crumb to give it a bit of a tang. And it's all bound together with maize meal and breadcrumbs. And it's been in the car now for a couple of days. And it binds together really well for throwing. Of course, it's not a pong. Smells rather like my homemade wine, this, this ground bait. It's that fermented. Doesn't say a lot for my wine. <coughs> oh, this is binding together really nicely. No, both of them's got no worries at all. <coughs> well, I've rigged up a couple of feeder rods back at the car with fixed pattern osters, and I've got a bucket of breadcrumbs for ground bait and I've already got the buzzers and rod rests set in. Let's just put these down and have a look through them. It's not easy to see with this ripple. Oh yeah, there they are. <laughs> Magic. Got a 12 hook on. Three grains on this goes on just about nicely. Hook length's only about six inches of four pound test, and the reel line itself is uh, six pounds. I like using six pound strain because it's feeder fishing, it takes an awful lot of knocking about on the bottom of the lake and through weed, and the actual strain of continually casting feeders, feeders does tend to. Put an awful amount of strain on monofilament. Try a cocktail. They're a good combination, brandlings and, and sweet corn. Often brings about quite aggressive bites. 
There's a good ripple blowing again now, too. Super indicators, these optonics. You get a single bleep tone, whether the line goes backwards or forwards. And these, what? This one straight away. Goodness me. Oh, it's got stuck in some weed. I think we'll have to let the line go slack, see if it'll swim out. This sometimes worked. The fish swims into some weed. And when it feels, here he goes again. It feels the relaxation of pressure from you, and then it it swims out. And it started to go then. It starts to go. Let's see if we can. crafty those tanks they you think you're going to pull for a break or pull the hook out of them and then they they come out of the weed as soon as you relax the line it feels like a good fish yes oh it's a soup fish oh dear me i have to be careful with this oh come on god that cocktail worked quickly goodness me nice looking fish one of the quickest things I've ever caught. <laughs> that couldn't have been out there two seconds. Oh, beautiful big tench. Look at those enormous great fins. Super fish. They really are quite unlike any other sort of fish. I think we're going to have a good day today. before we put the rods out. Great, just right. Good, that's a good stream. Now, I thought I'd got another bite then, but I think it's only a line bite. I've had a lot of problems with this this morning. The, about 35 yards out, there's quite a big clump of hornwort on the bottom. My line, even though I've got the rod set up high, my line's going along the bottom and then it's going up and over this hornwort where the bait is and then the tench are coming along off the bottom, feeding, coming up, going through the hornwort and they're giving me line bites and the bobbin's constantly giving me little tiny twitches. There's another one there. <laughs> if I didn't have that sort of... Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't this sort of contour on the bottom with the weed, I'd have hit that. Very confusing, that's very difficult. I think what I'm going to have to do is only hit something that just carries on after two or three bleeps, which means that the line has to be moved five or six inches. It's a pity because some of those are probably bites and I'm having to miss them. One of the nice things when I'm fishing is if it's a bit quiet, I can always do a bit of photography and I love photographing them the estate lakes that I fish. Actually, this is quite an interesting thing here. This culvert is, is usually where the, the lake flows out into a, a stream and that runs into a little river off a few miles away. I don't know how boggy this is here, but it, it's getting a bit softer now. 
Good. Here we are. Oh, there's a mussel shell. I'm sure this is one of the reasons we're having such trouble catching the, the tench down this end of the lake today. All this thick leaf mould, it's full of midge larvae. And of course, this is what it's like out there to where I was fishing. It's exactly the same, perhaps rotted down a bit more. And of course, amongst it is, is these swan mussel shells. Beautiful things, these. Some people burnish them up and put them on the sideboard. And these are a good tench bait in themselves anyway. Oh! God, there's some flies about here today. This brown algae bloom stops the sunlight reaching quite a lot of the plants that would flourish in this lake. So at the moment, there's not an awful lot of weeds, but uh, this is quite a nice little patch here. It's a, it's a mixture of hornwort. There's some quite large patches probably been rooted up by water birds. That usually grows in two or three feet, perhaps deeper water. And then we've got this amphibious pistol with these lovely little knotty plants on, um, flowers on them. Some snails on that one. And we've got a, a branch here that's all covered in all sorts of things. It's got caddis grubs on it in their little cases of various types. And it's under here where it's been resting against the bottom, it's got lots of little larval cases of the bloodworm, which is the larvae of the common midge. Probably the most important fly in terms of fish food that uh, anglers could possibly have. Some little green luminous things there. I don't know. Let's put it back. There's also quite a few fry in this little bay. In fact, it's probably one of the only areas around here that they can find refuge because of all the perch in the lake. In fact, there's millions right by my feet now, little tiny roach, all about an inch long. Probably this year's, well, they would be this year's fry. Of course, the secret with feeder fishing is consistently hitting the same spot. Fortunately, the wind isn't too bad, so I'm managing to do that. In fact, I did hit a, a fizz of bubbles right on, on target then, and when this happens, I'm often expecting a bite straight away. I'll just put the buzzer on quickly. I can't repeatedly strike at that. No, here's a fish. Goodness me. God, I thought that was a line bite starting there, but that's a good fish. It's kiting a long way to the left. <sighs> Come away from that other line. Lovely green in the sunlight, super fish tench. Really are. See where the yuck is then. Come on. Come on. Well, the other one's going now. <laughs> right. Hmm. Let's put him in the net. Knock the rod off the other. Oh, she's going bananas here. Ah. <laughs> I think I've lost this one. No, goodness me, it's still on. <laughs> That's the trouble you get fishing with two rods occasionally. 
Let's get the hook out of this net. Oh, I've done it again. Right, we'll sling it over there out of the way. Here we go. God dear, mate, it never rains, it pours. This is a nice fish. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, it's fighting. It feels like one of those, those male tents. They really do thump. You get a four pound male tent and it fights as hard as a, whoa, <laughs> six pound female. Come on, you little devil. Oh, this is a scrappy little fish. Oh, I think I'm gonna hand him in for a change. It's nice sometimes just to pick them out of the water, not get them caught up in the net. There we are, there's a little one. And it's a, oh, it's a female as well, it's not a male. It's the smallest one I've had today. Two in the net in about two minutes flat, it's ridiculous. Sometimes fishing's too easy. Right, the swim's gone a bit dead now. I've just put a load more corn out. I think what I'm going to go and do is try that swim down there on the staging for an hour or so. Uh, I've got my float rod all, already at, back at the car, so I'll just take some bait. Let me land in there. Goodness me, this staging's taken some hammer since I last stepped upon it. I don't know whether it's really going to Hold my weight, looks like one of those dilapidated scenic railways. Right, obviously not going to be able to move about very much on here. I think I'm going to have to get all the gear ready first and even put the kick net in, even though I haven't caught anything yet. Otherwise, it's going to mean a lot of clonking about. I don't need a stool, I can sit on the keep net bag. Just it's handy having a bit of wire tied to the top of that keep net. There's no space for a bank stick here. At least there's a few bubbles coming up. Despite the, br the brightness of the sun. All right. Let's put a few magnets out. Start off with three. As these tench aren't often fished for, I've got a 14 hook direct to two and a half pound line. <laughs> Look at that. Put two maggots out on the bottom and I've got a caddis case back. These are the... No, there's no caddis in it. These are the shells made from all little bits and twigs. They're quite intricate, really. Of the sedge flies, known to most people as the caddis, and there's this little grub inside, not unlike a maggot. Um, and all, all that's sticking out the front of the case is it's legs and head and its translucent sort of succulent body is inside. Good. Ah, here we are at last. Ah, yeah. 
This is a tench. Characteristic shaking of its head and over the rug goes. It feels like a good one as well. It's keeping quite deep. Oh, it's going round there again. Come on. There you come. Picking up a bit of weed round the tip ring there. Ah, oh, there she is. Oh, that's a good looking fish. Of oh, course, not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Come on. I'm worried about these coming in too close and losing it under the staging. I think we we'll... Come on. <laughs> Come on. Whoa, oh, there she is. Come on, baby. Go. Come on. Oh, yeah. oh beautiful. What oh, a super fish. Well, that must be close on five pounds. Beautiful tench. Lovely little red eye. That's one of the nice things about tench. They've all got teddy bear eyes. Let's have a look him and pop him straight in the net. Beautiful fish, that one. Really super. Oh. Actually, considering the conditions, it's been super fishing. It's probably all down to feeder fishing in shallow water. I think it's something to do with the way the, the tench home in on the feeder. When it hits the surface, that sound is very distinct and because they associate that with food. An odd little bleak then. No, that's all right. And of course, they home in on that noise. And the more you put the feeders out there, the more fish move into the swim. And I think that's the main reason that I've had so many bites. Some of them quite instant. Within seconds almost of, of the feeder hitting the bottom and me tightening up, putting the bobbin on, wham, it's up it's been. Yes! Come on, here we go again. God, this... Oh. That's the good thing about these long carbon rods. They really do pick the line up well, and when you feed a fishing at distance, there's awful, often a lot of slack line where it goes up and over the weed beds and just simply lying in the, the undertow. So it feels like a very good fish, this one. Oh, it's going to the left under the other line then. We'll have to do a bit of go, a bit of quick stuff here. Oh, oh, let me knock the other rod off. No, we're okay. Oh, magic. Come on, baby. Oh, yes, it is a nice fish. Beautiful. Oh, come on, I'm gonna lose it now. In you come. Oh. Oh, give it a little bit more line, lays up on the clutch. So it's that last few seconds there when you've got it on a short line. You're most likely to lose them. Picked up a lot of weed. Oh, lovely. Picked up a hell of a lot of weed then. Oh, yes, that is a nice fish. Oh, another big four. Oh, beautiful. Oh, super fish. Aren't you lovely? The sun will come put in the net. Ah. What a lovely end to the day. I didn't realise I'd caught so many. Oh, there's a little perch. Let's have a good look at them as we put them back one by one. Oh! <laughs> These males are lively. There you go. Oh, that's a nice big hefty female. Beautiful fish. Oh, they're so slippery. There we are. Female and male. The difference is now plainly obvious. The male with its huge proud pelvic muscles and these huge great spoon-shaped fins 
which cover, just about cover its backside up there, compared to the lovely sleek lines of the female and its smooth flat fins. There couldn't be more difference between two fish. Ugh. Absolute magic. Mm-hmm.